Hallo, ik ben Emiel van Drutzen. En last week I visited the System Dynamics Conference in Delft and I will show you what I learned and what I liked. I start with this presentation by Xin Zhang from MIT and he talked about the Chinese housing market. What he did is he uh, took an existing economic theory by Deepa Skull Wheaton and he translated it uh, into an SD model which is shown on the right. And on the left you see two graphs and they're really uh, similar. So uh, he showed that he can represent the behavior of the existing theory and then he started expanding the model. So what he did is he added an under construction sh uh, stock to uh, which is a first order delay and then he showed that this will dampen out the price fluctuations. Something different he added was the perceived price which is the fact that when price changes people only start realizing that later which is this sort of a gradual process and this accelerates the price fluctuations. So really interested, interesting. Uh, he also added components for land scarcity, speculative demand uh, because he told in China people buy houses which, where they don't live in but just they just speculate on the fact that the uh, prices are ri rising and also a land financing scheme and this he will finish later so I'm really cu curious what his findings will be. Next talk is John Sturman also from MIT and he talked about the Paris Agreement Do Models Matter? And with the Climate Interactive, they build a model, it's called Seed Roads. And what it does, it is a really quick um, uh, model that translates CO2 emissions into uh, temperatures. And with this model, they participated also in the uh, climate conference in Paris to help uh, decision makers learn from, for them themselves. And uh, what it model showed is that uh, for the business as usual scenario, we will have a temperature increase of four and a half degrees, which is uh, much. And with the proposals from uh, the Paris Agreement, this will only be reduced to three and a half uh, degrees centigrade, which is still a lot because the goal was to uh, always remain below two degrees. And the sea roads is also a, a, a game you can play. A role-playing game and we did it uh, with our host Fla Florian who played Banky Moon and uh, here he uh, was uh, explaining uh, about uh, some climate uh, effects you see him telling here about the albedo feedback and then we played the game and we were uh, made it, we were groups and there was a group for different countries so US China and uh, there also a group for uh, developed countries and other uh, undeveloped countries and we had to negotiate so we could uh, reduce our own emissions and we could also put money in a fund and from the fund uh, less developed countries could uh, do their own um, reductions and then we had some negotiation rounds and then after each round we would present what uh, what we uh, what our pro proposal was to reduce emissions and then we could fill it in into the sea roads uh, uh, app and then it would show how much temperature degrees uh, we realized and after three uh, rounds we uh, succeeded in getting to the two degrees um, uh, goal uh, but it was difficult. Next presentation I will talk about is uh, Mingling Xia and he talked about the Chinese energy transition and uh, China uh, proposal in Paris was to peak emissions in 2030 and reduce our CO2 emissions uh, per GDP by 60 to 65 percent. Well this is his model uh, it seems a bit complex but I can show some uh, p things that are important so there is uh, total electricity demand and this can either be uh, from coal or from uh, sustainable and uh, this leads to uh, a CO2 emission and this is what uh, what the results were so in blue at top is the business as usual which doesn't show a peak in 2030 then he uh, introduced some policies like carbon tax different uh, uh, subsidy policies and they all uh, didn't uh, work enough to uh, to have a peak in 2030 so then he combined all policies and uh, this is shown in the light blue line and this is uh, enough to uh, peak in 2030. 
Well, after that he did an uncertainty analysis with the EMA workbench. And uh, what that basically is that on the, all the uncertain parameters, he uh, put a range of exact expected values and then simulated it for a large uh, number of simulations. And then you can see the uncertainty. Uh, so left we have the annual CO2 emissions, and which is quite uncertain without the policies, but with the policies uh, it can be reduced and uh, with some certainty. Same thing uh, is for the CO2 emission intensity. And on the right is interesting, the sustainable fraction, uh, the uncertainty is quite large. And that's maybe because some of the policies do realize re uh, reduction in CO2 emission without sustainable, for instance, carbon uh, capture and storage, which could be in there. So really a cool work from Willem Auping, which is simulating the impact of climate mitigation policies on social unrest in rentier states. So we had two uh, models, a model for uh, global energy and a country stability model. And uh, this is uh, the outcomes of his model. And it looks like a bunch of spaghetti, and it is, but this uh, can show some interesting things when you look at uh, the th different uh, runs that are in there. For instance, here you see the, the oil price for no emission cap, an emission cap only in Europe, uh, one in Europe and North America, and uh, the last one in light blue is uh, Europe, North America and the Far East. So we see for instance from this that oil prices will only become really low uh, with uh, a CO2 cap. Here is the relative share of renewables and uh, we uh, also see that um, the share of renewables will only become really large with uh, an emission cap. And then uh, also something about the internal stability in the countries because that's also in the model. Uh, what Willem concluded was that um, the most resource dependent countries, for instance in the Middle East, were uh, most vulnerable to climate policies. And uh, Russia, Kazakhstan and Algeria were less vulnerable because they had a, a, another economy that would be uh, uh, helping them uh, and be less dependent. And uh, we'll also conclude that investing in renewables now leads to more resilience later. Uh, talking about resilience, uh, Hugo Herrera talked about resilience in the Guatemalan energy system. Well, they're mostly dependent on hydro and what he uh, investigated was uh, if there was a really dry year how did the, would the system react in that and he what i liked is that he um, put different uh, aspects of resilience and measured them so here you see that so for instance hardness is how large a disturbance has to be before it has an impact and uh, flexibility is how much a system can recover and how uh, you see recover rapidity. And I liked uh, the fact that he, try, he really tried to measure resilience. Well, this was actually a poster about exploring system dynamics insights. Uh, and uh, during uh, the talk we had there, things were written down on the poster uh, showing new, uh, new insights, it was really cool. And what it basically showed is that insight emerges from the interplay between images and IDs. And they also show that there are different kinds of insights you can get from a system dynamics model. And they are problem related or behavioral insights. So that's seeing problems as trends over time. Uh, structural insights, seeing causal and operational relationships. Uh, dynamic insights, seeing relationships between structure and behavior. And paradigmatic insights, seeing the world in system dynamic terms. And uh, they also showed that uh, SD activities restructure, restructure thinking and it can lead to double loop learning. Uh, and double loop learning is uh, explained here. So uh, single loop more learning is uh, when uh, your results are not good and you change your actions. It's the most common style of learning. Uh, but double loop learning is when uh, some your results are not what you wanted and you go back to change your assumptions. So it's just uh, it's more than just fixing the problem. Uh, this style of learning uh, question the underlying assumptions, values and beliefs about what we do. Well, this is uh, what I had to say and thank you for listening.